Hello everyone. Today we are starting a new topic. Uh, this is topic 13 which is enabling technologies and this comes under your A2 IT Unit 3 paper. So as the first lesson of topic 13 uh, in, which is enabling technologies we will be starting on the section 13.1 and that is on virtualization. So as usual, uh, I have added the screen capture from the Excel IT specification. So you can see what you need to learn under section 13.1 virtualization. Uh, so you need to know what's meant by virtualization, understand the concept of and reasons for using virtualization, understand ways of achieving virtualization such as containerization and virtual machines. Okay, so uh, virtualization is a process that allows a computer to share its hardware resources with uh, multiple digitally separated environments. Each virtualized environment uh, runs within its allocated resources such as memory, processing power and uh, storage. Uh, okay, so imagine you have a really powerful computer but you only use a small part of its capacity most of the time. Virtualization is like splitting that big computer into smaller ones called virtual machines, uh, shortened as VMs. So each VM acts like its own independent computer, even though they are small, uh, they are, they are, they are, all of them are running on the same physical machine. Right? Uh, so here's why we need virtualization, uh, efficient use of resources. Uh, virtualization allows us to make better use of our hardware instead of running uh, just one operating system and one set of software on a computer. We can run multiple operating systems and softwares uh, sets on separate virtual machines, uh, it making better use of the available resources. And the second reason is for isolation. Uh, each virtual machine is isolated from the others, meaning uh, if something goes wrong with one VM, uh, like a software crash or something, it won't affect the others. So this helps improve the overall stability and the security of a system. And third one is flexibility. Uh, virtualization makes it easy to set up and tear down environments. For an example, if you need to test a new piece of software, or run an old operating system, you can quickly create a new VM for that purpose without having to buy new hardware or make major changes to your existing system. And let's say you want to test uh, your web application, whether it's running on all the, uh, the, the latest uh, uh, few versions of uh, Mozilla Firefox, Chrome, and Safari, and whatever. So you can't set up machines, install everything. So you can have VMs that uh, runs those software and uh, you can tear down when you are done with it. And the uh, other reasons for soft, uh, virtualization is the cost saving. Uh, by, uh, by running multiple virtual machines on one physical server, you can reduce the number of physical servers you need to buy and maintain. So this can lead to significant cost savings in terms of hardware, electricity, cooling, and maintenance, and everything. And the next one is scalability. Uh, virtualization makes it easy to scale your infrastructure up or down as needed. You can quickly add or remove virtual machines to accommodate changes in workload or demand without having to make significant changes to your hardware setup. You can add whenever you want and you can remove or tear down the VMs whenever you want. And the next uh, reason is the disaster recovery. Uh, virtualization can simplify disaster recovery planning and implementation uh, by encapsulating entire virtual machines into files. You can easily back them up and restore them in case of hardware failure or other disasters. So this makes it easier to recover your uh, systems and data with minimal downtime. And the last reason is the resource management. Uh, virtualization allows for better management of computer resources such as CPU, memory, and storage. You can allocate resources to uh, dynamically uh, to different VMs based on their needs, ensuring that critical workloads have the resources they require while maximizing the overall efficiency. So those are the reasons for using virtualization.
right okay next uh, let's see what are the key components of virtualization one is the host machine the host uh, the physical server or the hardware on which the hypervisor runs uh, is referred to as the host machine you will know what hypervisor is uh, very soon host operating system uh, runs in the host machine and the next a uh, key component is the hypervisor right so also known as the virtual machine monitor uh, shortened as vmm virtual machine monitor and we call it as a hypervisor the hypervisor is a software layer that enables the creation and management of virtual machines uh, it abstracts physical hardware resources and allocates them to virtual instances allowing multiple vms to run concurrently on a single physical server Uh, the third component is uh, the virtual machine itself a virtual machine is a software emulation of a physical computer that runs an operating system and applications and each virtual machine operates independently of others with its own uh, virtualized hardware resources such as cpu memory storage and network network interfaces uh, and then we have the fourth component as the guest machine we had the host machine hypervisor and then the virtual machine and the fourth component is the guest machine a guest machine is a virtual machine running on the host machine it operates as if it were a standalone physical computer with its own operating system the guest os and applications unaware of other vms running uh, on the same physical server So in this diagram, you can see those four components at the bottom layer. You can uh, you see the physical host machine that has a uh, real CPU, storage, memory, and networking. And on top of it, uh, you see the hypervisor software. It helps to monitor the virtual machine. So we call it as virtual machine monitor, shortened as VMM. I mentioned in the previous slide as well. so then you have many virtual machines set up on that host machine uh, so this diagram is a clear example of all the four key components and uh, it kind of gives you the idea how a physical machine uh, creates vms with the support of the hypervisor okay so virtual machines are configured on hypervisor and does not tightly coupled with the physical hardware that the hypervisor is running on because of that the, the virtual machines can be moved to a uh, new hardware as well as any hardware that is detect, uh, defective can be replaced without impacting on the uh, vms running on the hypervisor a uh, hypervisor provides a uh, functionality to create an image or a copy of the vm and ability to clone the whole vm within seconds uh, that is a really advantage it further allows taking this copy to another hypervisor of the same product and deploy the vm on a different location entirely so hypervisor can back up the vm image image is like a backup of the complete configuration of the vm uh, along with the data and files it has so to create and run a vms we need hypervisor and uh, physical hardware connected to the hypervisor so that's a real advantage we can copy and clone it in, in another uh, physical location with the support of hypervisor All right so uh, there are five key benefits of virtualization uh first it slashes your it expenses utilizing a non virtualized environment can be inefficient because when you are not consuming the application on the server the computer is sitting idle and can't be used for other applications but when you virtualize an environment that single physical server transforms into uh, many physical ma virtual machines so these virtual machines can have different operating systems and run different applications while still all be all uh, been hosted on the single physical server the second benefit is virtualization reduce downtime and enhance uh, resiliency in disaster recovery uh, situations when a disaster affects a physical server someone is responsible for replacing or fixing it and this could make take uh, can take like hours or even days 
with the virtualized environment it's easy to provision and deploy allowing you to replicate or clone the virtual machines that's been affected uh, the recovery process would take like few minutes as opposed to the hours it would take to provision and set up a new physical server uh, so it significantly enhances the resilience of the environment and improving the business continuity the third benefit is it increases efficiency and productivity uh, with fewer servers, your IT teams will be able to spend less time maintaining the physical hardware and IT infrastructure. You'll be able to install, update, and maintain the environment across all the VMs in the virtual environment on the server instead of like going through the uh, laborious and tedious process of applying the update server by server. Uh, so that's time dedicated to maintaining the environment and it increases your team's efficiency and uh, the productivity. And the last one, the fourth uh, benefit is uh, uh, virtualization allows control, independence and DevOps. Uh, so since the virtualization environment is segmented into virtual machines, uh, your developers can quickly spin up a virtual machine without impacting a production environment. So this is ideal for developers, the, pro, uh, the software programmers, and the software testers, as the as the developers can quickly clone the virtual machine and run a test on the environment. For an example, if a, if a uh, new software patch has been released, uh, that's a bug fix has been released, someone can clone the virtual machine and apply the latest software update, test the environment, and then pull it into the production application where the real time uh, customers are using so this increases the speed and agility of an application the fifth and the final benefit is, uh, is virtualization allow uh, movement to be more green friendly organizations uh, when you are able to cut down on the number of physical servers you are using it's lead to a reduction in the amount of power being consumed the electricity and this has two green benefits. It reduces the expenses for the business and that money can be reinvested elsewhere. And it reduces the uh, carbon footprint that you uh, uh, that the company is responsible as well. Right. So that brings us to the end of virtualization. And now we look at containerization. Uh, this is a more modern enabling technology compared to virtual machines. Uh, but these two uh, virtualize uh, not an entire machine, but application deployment and execution. So let's learn containerization in detail now. So what is a container? Uh, in software sense, of course. Uh, well, the word container is actually related to the shipping container in concept. Uh, if you can see the diagram, you can see there are so many containers stacked. This is uh, a photo from a uh, uh, port where the containers are stacked uh, before they move into a ship so it shows a lot of shipping containers right uh, a, a shipping container packages all our items put it inside the standardized shipping box like this and send it across from one country to another the trucks are standardized to uh, mount the container the container ports has machinery to transfer the container from truck to a container ship. The container ships has standardized layouts to fit in a container securely and transport it to across the world to another country. So as you can see, shipping containers is a global standard to shipping cargo. Similarly, in the same, uh, the, con the, the same concept is adopted in software when we consider containerization. So instead of goods, here we talk of software configurations, environments, and everything else an application software needs to uh, run. Uh, uh, we put up inside a box that can be moved and deployed in any other container engine that supports it. So a container is a lightweight runtime environment that contains all the binaries, the code that you write the libraries and other dependencies necessary to run an application. Uh, the host operating system provides containers with the kernel and other required system files. Uh, so containers virtualize the operating system enabling applications to run on a target machine through an IP address and an exposed uh, port. It also enhances cross-platform compatibility for 
packaged apps. So the minimum requirement for containerized session is a container engine, a virtual runtime environment running on top of an operating system kernel. Okay, now let's look at what's included in a container with a diagram. Uh, as you can see, it's a standard side box and it can have, uh, yeah, the container includes the code of the software most of the time. It also includes the compilers, runtime and configuration. So settings needed to run the runtime or execute the compilation of the code. Uh, further, the containers include all the libraries which are uh, dependent other small software such as APIs and components provided by the third parties. It also contains the environment to either build the code to run the runtime application. So basically the things that need to run the application is uh, contained in the uh, container. Uh, yeah, here's a wish, uh, wish you, uh, yeah, containerization versus virtualization. So it's a, a visual representation of containerization versus virtualization uh, the two are very similar but very different on the same time uh, the virtualization is enabled through the hypervisor uh, while containerization is enabled through a container engine uh, it's the software that support deploying and managing containers uh, docker for instance is one of the most popular container engines used around the world and Kubernetes is another famous one used in the IT industry. That's uh, uh, Docker and Kubernetes are uh, two uh, mainly used examples of container engines. Uh, while hypervisor deploys VM that has their own individual guest OSs, a container does not have a guest OS but has everything needed to run an application. So as we learned a few minutes ago, it, uh, it packaged code, configuration, environments, runtime, and compilers and libraries. So in conclusion, the objective of containerization is to uh, uh, let development teams focus on building and deploying software without worrying about setting up the servers, resolving dependencies, uh, uh, resolving conflicts uh, and all that. So when they move the deployment from one machine to another, uh, uh, so this the diagram uh, shows the whole landscape of what containers achieve. They let the developers use the containers to build, ship, run any app anywhere. They let anyone use any OS underneath and have deployment anywhere, either physically in an on-premise server room or virtually in a data center or in the cloud. So people involved need not to worry about the setting up, configuring, shipping, and conflict resolution when they work with container engines. Okay. Right. So, uh, so uh, it's real benefit uh, that we have for the software industry. So with this, uh, yeah, we conclude the lesson that comes under section thirteen point one uh, virtualization. Uh, under topic three, that is, so virtualization is mentioned as one of the enabling technologies, and uh, that's what we have covered right now. So thank you, and let's meet again with the lesson on thirteen points uh, two, and that section is on the distributed system. That's also another enabling technologies that has uh, helped software industry in large scale. So let's meet with that lesson until then and thank you and uh, study for your exams.